Hey friends, Chris here. Thanks for being with us. We're still on the terms of the cross. Our term today is grace. I want to talk about unmerited favor, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Now I heard about a lady barber one time named Grace, and they said if you go to Grace, you only have to go one time. Why is that? Because once saved or shaved by grace, once shaved, always shaved. That was pretty corny, wasn't it? Well, let me give you some points. Number one, in grace, Jesus takes our place. I said by grace, he takes our place. In the tabernacle, you know there was the Holy of Holies, and some people say that was the face place. That's where God revealed himself. But listen, the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies is the grace place. It symbolizes Calvary. Now, man's sin had to be atoned for. Uh, Adam committed cosmic high treason against heaven, and you just can't sweep that under the rug. You can put it under the blood, but you can't sweep it under the rug. Another way of saying that, God doesn't wink at sin. He can't let us off the hook. So instead, what he do? He put his own son on the hook. Jesus hung on the cross for us. Now, let me give you a definition. Larry, uh, uh, Lewis Perry Chafer in Systematic Theology says, Grace is what God may be free to do, and indeed what he does for the lost after Christ uh, has died on behalf of them. The key there is that Christ died. You know, the love of God is important, but love is not enough. If love would have saved us, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. But he had to take our place, uh, and Calvary is the grace place. Number two, your chances of being saved outside of grace? Not a trace. I said outside of grace, not a trace. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. And Galatians 2 and 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. None of us are good enough. Only one was. For you to be good enough, you would have had to have been born of a virgin, lived in the city of Bethlehem, and gone 33 years without a blemish against your life. Only Christ is good enough. And then number three, grace is not earned, it is received. Romans 5 and verse 17, they that receive abundance of grace shall reign in Christ by one, Jesus Christ. Now listen, the words mercy and grace are very similar, but actually they're two sides of the same coin. In mercy, we don't get what we, what we deserve, but in grace we do get what we don't deserve. That's remarkable. You know, one time a photographer took some pictures of a lady in the the lady complained, hey, these photographs don't do me justice. And the photographer said, hey, woman, what you need is not justice. What you need is mercy. And all of us need mercy and grace. And then number four, if he offers grace, be gracious. I said, if he offers grace, be gracious. You know what I think the damning sin is? Not smoking and drinking and prostitution or even gambling or whatever. I think the worst sin is ingratitude. To walk right past the cross and not take time to bow your knees and say thank you that God gave you his grace. Listen, you need to praise him for it. A drowning man is a fool for not grabbing hold of an outstretched hand. And a sinner would be a fool for not grabbing that nail-scarred hand. And then number number five, uh, there is grace for every possible case. I said grace for every case. Uh, the song says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like you. Yeah, you. No, it's a, it's a wretch like me. He gives grace to the humble in uh, James 4 and verse 6. Uh, and the rope of the gospel is long enough to reach anybody from the guttermost to the other. Most in Hebrews 7 and 25. Then number six, don't turn grace into disgrace. Don't make grace gross. Some people have. You know, Romans 6 and 1, shall we const- Continue in sin so that grace may abound. And Paul said, God forbid. You know, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to every man teaching us that we ought to deny ungodliness in Titus 2 and verse 11. In other words, grace uh, uh, leads you closer to Christ. Grace is not a license to sin. Uh, It's a license to reign in life by Christ. Uh, You have to respect a driver's license. Same with the grace of God. Then number seven, this race that started in grace ends in space. Isn't it beautiful, folks, uh, that we stepped out of the chair or the pew to go to the altar? One of these days, we're going to step out of our bodies and out of our clothes, uh, and we're going to take a leap uh, to the right hand of the throne of God. Let me say it again. The race that starts in grace ends in space. One of these days, we're going to be stepping on the clouds uh, to meet Jesus in the air. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. Like if you like, share it with a friend. We'll see you tomorrow with more on Terms of the Cross.